Well, my name is Michael Chang, and I'm your dean. The best hospitality school on the planet. And welcome to today's discussion, mental health in hospitality. This week is very special at FIU. It's the Panthers Alumni Week. It's also our 10th anniversary. And Panther Alumni Week is the brainchild of a former FIU trustee, Gerald Grant. And it was created to connect students with alumni through class presentations, industry panels, and networking events. Panther Alumni Week also promotes relationship building, which leads to networking, internships, mentoring, and career opportunities. And we are very honored to have two such alumni here today. Patrick Lindo, class of 2001, with a master's in finance in 2002. And FIU trustee Chanel Rowe, class of 2014. So today's presentation is a continuation of a series that trustee Rowe created to offer students, faculty, and alumni a safe space to discuss the unique mental health implications of various career paths and to gain insight from industry leaders about how to successfully manage mental health while pursuing career goals. And I'd like to thank Trustee Rome for having the foresight and championing this very important issue in our society today. Thanks. Trustee Rowe graduated as the valedictorian of the College of Law class at Florida International University in 2014. In 2021, she became the first Black woman appointed to the FIU Board of Trustees and the youngest trustee in the history of the State University System of Florida to be confirmed by the Florida Senate. She's also a founding member of the FIU Foundation Office of Inclusive Philanthropies in Argyle Women in Philanthropy Council. Before she was elevated to the Board of Trustees, Ms. Rowe held the roles of Vice President, Parliamentarian, Director, and Committee Chair on the FIU Alumni Association Board of Directors, where she founded the board's first Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Committee. In the legal community, Trustee Rowe has, several, has served on several Florida bar committees, including the Standing Committee on Student Education and Admission to the Bar, the Grievance Committee, and the Diversity and Inclusion Committee. She is past chair of the 90 day chapter of the Florida Association for Women's Lawyers Mentoring Committee, and previously provided services to the Florida Board of Bar Examiners. Trustee Rowe is also a graduate of Florida Bar's William Reese Smith Junior Leadership Academy. She graduated summer cum laude from Florida Atlantic University with a bachelor's degree in economics, and her career is very impressive and one to be proud of. Trustee Rowe is founder and managing partner at Euro Law, where she represents corporate clients in the areas of securities, regulation, bankruptcy, and business law. Prior to founding Euro Law, Trustee Rowe served as general counsel and partner at the leading global fintech broker dealer facilitating the sale of over $1 billion in securities across various alternative asset classes. Before going in house, Trustee Rowe served as enforcement counsel for the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission's Miami Regional Office, where she led investigations, negotiated settlements, and litigated actions involving complex fraud and federal securities violations. And prior to joining the SEC, Trustee Rose served as a judicial law clerk to, sit to senior federal judge Donald L. Graham of the U.S. District Court for the Southern District of Florida. Before joining the federal government, Trustee Rowe practiced law at two M Law 100 firms, Ackerman LLP and Shook Hardy and Bacon LLP, where she defended Fortune 500 companies in complex business and medical product liability actions. Trustee Rowe's achievements have been recognized nationally by reputable organizations, including the Miami Dade Bar Association, Super Lawyers Magazine, the American Lawyer and the National Black Lawyers. Please tell me welcome, Trustee Roll. Thank you so much, Dean Chang, for that wonderful introduction. I was a little exhausted listening to it. 
Um, but um, thank you so much. It's, it's my pleasure to be here to serve this institution that has been so good to me. Um, good morning. I'm so happy to see so many of you here for this important conversation. Um, since the pandemic, people all around the world have been experiencing increased levels of stress and severe anxiety, PTSD, and psychosis. Uh, recently, the World Health Organization reported a 25% increase in anxiety and depression worldwide due to the pandemic. In the US, the number of people seeking mental health assistance online increased significantly from 2019 to 2021. According to the Mental Health America, in 2022, there was a 500% increase in the number of people who took mental health screenings over those who completed the same screenings in 2019. Notably, the number and percentage of people screened with moderate to severe symptoms of anxiety were particularly severe for youth and multiracial screeners. This global phenomenon affects the world we live in, yet many students choose career paths with no, uh, no sort of awareness or consideration for the impact that such careers will have on their mental health, well-being, and family life. Entering the real world can be extremely overwhelming. Uh, and research has shown that this transition may cause anxiety and stress. In fact, the CDC reported that poor mental health and stress can negatively impact a person's productivity, job performance, ability to engage with one's work, physical capability, and daily functioning. For example, depression interferes with a person's ability to complete physical tasks 20% of the time and reduces cognitive performance about 35% of the time. As far as hospitalities go, uh, the restaurant industry is actually the most at risk for illicit drug use and substance abuse disorders, and the third most at risk for heavy alcohol use. Some very alarming statistics are about 11% of food services workers reported binge drinking during the last month. Almost 20% of service workers reported using illicit drugs during the last month and 17% of food service workers have been diagnosed with substance abuse disorders. Some of the contributing factors for these uh, phenomenons are high stress environment, a relatively young labor pool, low wages, irregular work schedules, including very late night shifts, low management surveillance, work culture norms, such as having a drink or going out after work, the availability of alcohol and peer pressure from coworkers. Here at FIU, we don't want you to become a statistics. And so these conversations are geared toward helping you understand the world that you'll be entering and also gaining important tools that'll help you manage and thrive in the environments that you wish, wish to succeed in. Also very important here, there are many strategies that you can employ to prepare for this transition, such as accessing important campus resources like counseling and psychological services and the Career and Talent Development Office here at FIU to help plan your career transition. Last semester, we began having intentional conversations about connecting mental health, mental well-being, and career readiness. In November, we held our first mental health panel that focused on entrepreneurship, entertainment, and hospitality. I'm so pleased to say that over 200 participants joined us in person and on Zoom for that conversation and provided our students with real-life hands-on perspectives for discussing their personal challenges. And today's program aims to offer a similar opportunity. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to Patrick Lingo, uh, the executive restaurant leader of Planter Restaurants, who is with us today and a wonderful alum. Uh, Patrick is originally from Chicago. Uh, he's now based in Miami Beach, where he has worked at many South Florida hot spots, including Prime 112, which is one of my favorites, the Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino, and Lifehouse Hotels. With a bachelor's degree in hospitality management, as well as a master's in finance, both from FIU, he has also worked as senior vice president of CB5 Hospitality, where he focused on unique food and beverage conceptualization and operations for the boutique hotel industry. His career path eventually led him to fall in love with the plant-based lifestyle, and he is passionate about expanding the plant-based movement around the globe with Planta, where he currently oversees his operations in Florida. He is also an ambassador for the Burnt Chef Project, which he'll be talking to us about today, a global group of passionate hospitality leaders looking to end the stigma of mental health. 
help me please give Patrick a very warm welcome. Sure. All right. Yeah. <laughs> All right, thank you guys. Thanks for the introduction. Um, super excited to be here today. I haven't been here, I've been here one time since I graduated and like, I remember this room before it was like blank, it wasn't like this. I don't know what you did. Um, so I'm just, yeah, right. so I'm just happy to be here, it's amazing. And uh, today is really gonna be sort of like a uh, lighthearted casual talk, so. I'm um, not going to get too serious into stuff, um, but if you do feel like comfortable or uneasy, you guys can step outside. Nobody's going to get offended. You know, we'll send somebody out to talk to you. Um, you know, I'm not a doctor, not a psychologist, just, uh, you know, kind of been through it, you know, so uh, just here to kind of share the story a little bit and uh, bring some awareness. Um, so the Burnt Chef Project, um, it started in 2019. Has anybody in here heard of it? Maybe not, maybe one, two, all right, it's a good sign. Um, so it's, it's, it started in, in England and that's where it's based. So it was, it was founded by Chris Hall. And uh, if you want, you can go to the next page. Cool, so there he is, there's Chris Hall. So he's the founder. Um, he has worked in the industry, and, you know, as a bartender, um, eventually he moved his way up where he distributed food, gourmet food to like higher end restaurants, five-star restaurants, hotels. And, you know, he kind of him, found himself in the binds um, with, the, with, you know, issues and mental health. And he started to go to psychologists and doctors trying to find out like what was wrong with him, you know? And um, when he went to go sit with, uh, still working, okay. Yeah, when, when he went through some therapy, you know, he started to explain, you know, why he was there. And he was like, you know, basically explaining he wished like he could shut off all the noise in his head, you know, and just be quiet. And, you know, he says, you know, he had the impression that basically everybody else was able to do that except for him, you know. Um, and he, it was explained to him in that session that, you know, everybody kind of goes through it in, in some way or not, you know. Um, and it was kind of like eye opening to him. And, you know, he did go through whatever he, everybody has their own path. He went through different, uh, you know, therapies and sessions and, and, and found, found his way kind of back to where he feels like normal, normal again, you know. And, um, you know, after going through that journey, he kind of just felt like he needed to like give back to the industry somehow. And that's kind of like how I felt too. Um, so he founded Burn Chef and it really kind of started as like a, like a side gig. So um, if you go maybe to the next slide, let's see what's there. Yeah, cool. So that's kind of like the timeline. But if you look, if you go back to, you don't have to go back at the first page, if you see those all the black and white pictures of all the chefs and like, it just kind of started in that way. And it was meant to be just to kind of get people talking, you know, and understanding that a lot more goes on behind the scene, you know, and just got people talking. And then it, eventually it led to, you know, kind of develop into more of like a, a full time, you know, thing for him. And during COVID, you know, everything was shut down. So he was able to really kind of kind of focus on the project. Um, and um, it kind of grew a lot bigger. All You know, it was meant to be just for his city in England and it kind of started to expand throughout all of England and London and everything and um you know it kind of grew into where we live now it's um you know it's a uh it's more of like a, a, ch a charity organization so we do sell you know like t-shirts hats aprons books things like that and and what it's meant to do is help us raise money so that we can kind of spread the awareness in in a, in a bigger sense so we're able now to you know, do corporate trainings in, in, in hotel companies and restaurant brands or whoever's kind of looking for training for their, their people. So we do a lot of that. Um, there's a, a 24 hour hotline, which I'll share with you guys later on. So that's meant to be like, you know, I'm feeling crazy today. I, you know, I'm, I'm dealing with some sort of a, a breakup, financial, financial issues. I just got fired, whatever it is. There's a hotline you can call and you text them and somebody will get back to you within like five to 10 minutes. So that's something that we, we offer as well to everybody, you know, it's around the world. It's in, you know, Canada, US, Ireland. It's, a, it's, it's starting to get everywhere. Like, 
it's really just starting to expand here in the US right now. There's four ambassadors, I think. So with me, there's one in New York, one in uh, like Seattle, and then one in, in California. So we're kind of just getting going here and it's just starting to warm up. Um, so that's kind of where it has, as, is now. If you want to go to the next page. And then now, if you have time, you know, visit, um, you could check out our website, you know, later on today or whatever. Um, but there's a lot of resources on there that you can kind of go through. So topics as far as like, you know, diet, how you eat, how you sleep. There's meditation videos um, talking about journaling, things like that. So a lot of good stuff that you can kind of check it out. It's all, it's all free. It's on the website and it's uh, available to anybody at any time. Uh, go ahead, next. <laughs> All right, so my story. So why am I here today? Oof. Um, on my way up here, I started to get like very emotional, you know? Um, so I guess, how did I get here first? So I was um, planning to go to um, University of Houston for hospitality. And uh, I was basically like signed up, ready to go. Um, and then somebody told me about a school at FIU. I had no idea what FIU was, never heard of it. You know, my whole, my whole uh, as a kid growing up, my uncle went to a UM, so I wanted to go to UM my whole life. And, uh, but I knew, like, I wanted to do hospitality. So that's why I went to, um, you know, I was going to Houston. But then somebody last minute was like, oh, there's a school at FIU, blah, 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 blah. So I jump on a plane to go check it out. And, you know, I come see this man here, you know. And, uh, you know, Rocker was the first person I met here. And uh, I was like, man, you know, after meeting him and like feeling like so welcome and like I was amazed by the school and I was amazed like it was just so it was like it was, you know, it was maybe like what, 20 years when I got here, 20 years old, something like that. So, um, you know, I changed, changed everything, came to Miami. So he's the reason why I'm here now. I moved to Miami. Uh, it's pretty funny. And he's still here, you know, running the show. So. Um, you know, I, uh, I always knew I wanted to be in restaurants. I knew I wanted to be mostly, you know, front of house. I dabbled in kitchens and I did like everything. Um, did a little bit of hotels and things like that. But I really like found my groove in restaurants. Um, you know, since I was 15, I was working in, you know, I was a pizza, a pizza man at 15 and then waiting tables. And they were letting me bartend at like 20. And I was like, how is this even possible? But it's like, you know, that, that's how it was. So I was kind of, I just I fell in love with it. I fell in love with like the, the energy, you know, like when you're in that rush in the restaurant and just like the adrenaline is going and it's like, go, 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 go. And I, I was like addicted to it, like immediately, you know? Um, so when I got to FIU, I knew exactly what I wanted to do, you know, and I, I went through school. Um, you know, this school is great being in like the epicenter of hospi hospitality in the U S if not, if not the world, you know, with all the, the hotels and restaurants. And it's like, even more than that, like, you know, the casino is like where I worked at the hard rock casino and like, cruise ships are all right here like there's so many different like outlets that you can you can you can test while you're here and i encourage you guys to like try everything every 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 year change jobs try something else until you find like what where your passion is you know and it might it might change trying different things and that's kind of like what i did as i was going through here um and you know and i ended up out of you know i finished school did, did my master's and at the same time i was hired as like a a manager in a restaurant on south beach and, um, you know, again, I just like fell in love with that adrenaline and I just wanted to be like the best, the best at everything. Like that's how I just grew up is just like, go, 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 go. So, you know, I, I immediately started like working like crazy, you know, working like six days a week, most of the time, honestly, seven days a week, you know, 10, 15 hours a day. And it was just like, that's just what I did. You know, that became my life. And I grew, I grew fast, you know, I, I grew up to GM pretty quick. And then I was multi GM at like, I don't know, 21, 22. I was, I was running hard, you know? Um, and I loved it. There was no, no complaints, but you know, eventually things just start to like, you know, just start to like build up, you know, like my, my family's in Chicago, I'm here. So obviously like what happens, we all know in hospitality business, you know, you're not there for the holidays. You're not there for weddings. You're not there for birthdays. You're not there for anybody basically. Right. Um, and that was fine for a while. You know, I, I had a good run. Um, I actually eventually moved up where I was working for a consultant company out of, um, Greenwich, Connecticut. And I was based at the casino and I was like this, you know, 
this in my head, I was I had like this big ego that like I was in charge of all this stuff, and it was like it was great, it was fun, you know. Again, run, 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 but as fast as you can. That was my life. Um, and eventually, I needed to, you know, sort of like figure out how am I gonna cope with all this like stress, right? Of like working all of these hours and missing all of you know the family stuff, and and you know, and then it's like dealing with the pressure of the job, you know opening restaurants like crazy, you know, staff, dealing with staff issues, dealing with, you know, everything, guest complaints, everything that we deal with on a daily basis, you know, and it just goes on and on and on and on in the business, in this business. And, um, you know, where did it end, leave, leave me, ended up me like turn into alcohol. That was my, um, that was my like, like coping strategy for all this stuff, you know? Um, and I thought like, I would like, like kind of like in Chris Hall's story, I just thought like, I was alone, you know, I thought it was, I was, it was me, only me feeling this, you know? So it got to the point where, you know, I was working 15 hours a day, drinking three hours a night until three or 4 a.m. and then just doing the same thing all over again, like a repeat, like a repeat, like a repeat. And like, like, again, it was, it was fine for a while. You know, I got stuff done. I was very successful, but it just, what happens is it just starts to build and build and build and build because I wasn't dealing with any of this stuff. I was just drinking, drinking alcohol to make it go away, you know? Um, my career kept going up and up and up and up. And, uh, you know, I said, I got married. I have two daughters. They're beautiful. Um, I got a big job that was offered to move out of, out of town, huge job. So I took it. And um, basically, like, after that, my life went, like, went up in flames, basically, to be honest. Yeah, my, my drinking went like out of control. I was uh, drinking in the morning to go to work. I couldn't, I couldn't go to work without drinking, you know? And um, it became this like crazy cycle of all day long, Patrick is drunk, you know? And like, it took a while for people to catch on, you know? And I was able to like cover it up because I was doing a good job. I was getting stuff done. But then eventually Patrick disappears and we don't know where he was, you know? And, um, you know, you just start to, to forget things and, and, and it just goes down and down and down and until I, I blew it all up, you know, I blew everything up and ended up in, uh, in West Palm Beach, basically practically homeless. You know, my, my family was gone at that point. I was living in the motel to motel from day to day, juggling things and trying to manage all this, all this stuff. And, you know, that's what I, that, that's kind of how I got here, you know, and, um, it took a while. It was a long journey to get back here. And that's why I was like so emotional today because I was just like thinking about this like cycle of like up and down and up and down. And now it's like, I'm coming on the way back up now, you know? And it's like, it's important to remember those, you know, those bad times. So we don't go, I don't go back there. Um, you know, I would say, you know, now it's been, I've been on the right track for about four and a half years now. Um, building my career back up, building trust in, in people, you know, and um, it took a lot to get there, but I've, I've, I found my groove and I found, you know, my story is different than Chris's, for example, how I got here. Um, but I'm here today because I wonder what would have happened if I had this in, in school when I was going to school, right? And being able to like hear this somebody's story and like understand that like, I know there's somebody in this room that's going through the same thing. I don't know who you are and I don't need to know who you are, but I know that people go through this, you know? And um, if I can't help somebody today, maybe in 10 years, you'll remember this and you'll come back to it. And you remember, I remember this guy talking about mental health and, and the Burn Chef Project. And, and, you know, you might be able to help somebody else, maybe help somebody in this room, help a, an employee, help a friend, help a family member. It doesn't have to, you know, obviously we're talking hospitality today but it's not just hospitality that goes through that's it's it's everywhere and it's also not the point of this presentation to tell you to like you know get the hell out of hospitality because it's 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 terrible it's like it's it's not the case at all i i love this industry you know and we're, we're made we're made to go through st stress we're made to work like this we're made to be successful but it's like how you deal with this on, the, on, on, on when you're not not here you know and um that's kind of the point of it like you can do it. I, like I, I do it now. I work 10, 12 hours a day. I work like crazy. You know, I'm operating four restaurants in, in Florida right now. And it's, it's hectic, man. It's, it's crazy every single day. And the stuff that, you know, happens, it's like, 
literally, literally nonstop. But I'm able to do it today because I have tools in place. You know, I have a practice in place. I, I, I know how to deal with stuff and I make sure that that Patrick comes first now, you know, because if I don't take care of myself first, I'm not going to be able to take care of any of my team. So, you know, I do, you know, set boundaries at sometimes, you know, I, I do set times where it's like I do my yoga practice every day and there's, there's just no meetings at that time. It's not possible to get a hold of me, you know, and that's kind of like one of the things that I learned, like, again, if you don't take care of yourself, you're going to be no good to anybody. Um, so I think we can go to the next page. So now we're going to talk about mental health. And although this room is not set up how I want to do it, but uh, we're going to do it like room by room. So I'm going to give you guys a sheet. And I just want you to kind of like huddle for a second as best as you can. And uh, just want you to kind of like think about words that come to mind when you hear. Yeah, thank you. So maybe like five groups, one, two, three, four, five. Just take a couple minutes and just... Think about some words that come to mind when you hear mental health. There's no right or wrong answer. So whatever you think of, you write it down. What's that? One more sheet? One more, yeah, let's do it. We'll do one more. Okay, cool. Thank you. Uh. Good. Oh, you got a whole list over here. Good. Uh, keep it, keep it. You keep it. All right, cool. So whoever has the sheets, um, just like raise your hand so I know you have them. And then uh, we're going to go one by one, just kind of read through a couple of them. You want to go? Yeah, you go first. Just give me like three words on your sheet. Uh, anxiety, fear, and panic attacks. Anxiety, fear, panic attacks. Good. How about yours? Good. I like overwhelming. That's good. Uh, all right. Relax, understanding, calm. All right. And then there's like one more. All right. Overthinking. That's a good one. Yeah. And then there's one more over there. Yeah, he's got one there. Go ahead. Sleep, time management, and wellness. Yeah. Wellness, good. Anybody else? So those are all the sheets. Yeah. Oh, there's one more. Um, our group 
Taking care of yourself. Good. Okay. Cool. So if you notice most of the words, there was a lot, there was a couple of positive ones which were which are good, but most of the words that you get that everybody gave, like overwhelming and stress, all that stuff you notice it's all like negative connotations about mental health, right? And that's like the first thing that that goes to everybody's head. Um, does anybody know what stigma means? Who, who anybody? Give me one. Bad. Surrounding whatever. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, a stigma is basically like a negative connotation surrounding like a thing, a group of people, um, an activity, or in this case, a concept like mental health. So there is a stigma around mental health that is, it means it's viewed negatively like, oh, you're having mental health problems, yeah. things wrong with you, yeah. where when that's really not the case. Wow, amazing. That's like per perfect answer, even though there's no right answer, but yeah, that's perfect. Um, you know, there's this whole stigma, like you're saying, around mental health, where it's like people automatically go to like the negative thoughts, you know, and it becomes this thing where like people think that they can't talk about it, you know, and I, that, was, that was my problem. I didn't talk to anybody about my problem for probably 15 years. You know, I just kept it, kept it inside. That's why I just drank. So we just, the problem would just go away. Um, but, but the truth is the problem doesn't go away unless you, you actually deal with it, you know? Um, so, you know, we, you know, I grew up in more of like older, older, older school kind of restaurant business. And obviously things are changing a lot right now. Um, but I, I, you know, I grew up where it's like, you just work and you don't, you don't talk about those things, you know, that, you know no, nobody, nobody says anything about that. You would never tell your chef, oh, I'm, I'm tired. I can't come to work today. Or. I'm stressed out or I'm even sick, you know, it was like, how many times did I go to work sick every day? You know, and that I was sick, I would just go to work, wouldn't say anything because that's just, you know, how the mentality, you know, used to be. Um, so, you know, that's the biggest, you know, I think um, goal of this project is to like get, get rid of the stigma, you know, and make people feel okay to talk about these things, you know, and it, it's, it's sort of, crazy how this just happened like you know three days ago but i had an employee come to me and you know she says i can't come to work today because i almost jumped in jumped in front of a bus like literally um you know and i, I, I it's it's just crazy how it all works that she called me for that you know and it's like we're here to learn how to like deal with this stuff because it's because it's real it just happened to me three days ago this stuff is real and it's not just one person you know another person had a problem because they can't pay their bills they don't have a place to stay and it's just like it goes on and on and on and on with things and like it's very easy to just say okay you know you know fire her and get somebody else right but 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 that's not how you like build a culture you know and build a team so we have to be there for for our people, for our friends, for, you know, our team members. So, um, you know, it's, it's real out there. And it, what, you know, one thing she told me is like, I don't, you know, she's like, I don't feel comfortable talking to my family about this because my family is just going to throw medicine at it, you know, and I don't want, I don't want to go that route. I want to go a different route. And, you know, she started to say she was thinking about, going to you know like a, a therapy going to somewhere where she can get some help and you know the family didn't want to hear anything about it you know and um then she was saying like you know i don't i'm, I'm afraid to go because i don't know if it's going to work and i said if you don't if you don't go and try you're never going to know you know and if it doesn't work you you find another solution but if you don't try it you're never going to know if it's going to work or not right and that's kind of where we're, where, you know, where we're at with her right now, but it's, it's, it's a real thing. Um, you can go to the next. All right. So now if I can just work, um, if you can raise your hand for everybody here who has mental health. All right. All right. Like 50%. All right. That's, that's what I was expecting. Um, the answer is that everybody has mental health, positive, negative, and we'll go. You can go to the the, the next one. Thank you. 
So what is mental health? Again, it's just like a quick um, description of, you know, the, from the World Health Organization, but, you know, being productive and fruitfully living, you know, being able to contribute to, to the society. That's kind of like the general description, um, you know, being able to live a fruitful life and being able to, to live and, and be successful in all the normal stresses of, of life that happen every day. You know, like talk about mental health today, like literally when I'm coming here, my Jeep broke down on Biscayne. And it wouldn't start, and it was like I was I was I was supposed to be here like like an hour and a half. I was supposed to be here like on time, and um, you know I needed to get somebody out of it. Somebody came out of the car, helped me push the jeep off the road, and I just took Uber here. But it's like this is like stuff that happens every day. You know, before I would have probably drank over it. You know, but today, 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 I don't need to do that. Um, go ahead, next one. All right, so I'm gonna pass out some sheets on this one too. So this is kind of like. A little bit of description of mental health in like a continuum and like I, like I was saying like a couple of slides ago like everybody here has mental health it's a matter of if it's if it's good or bad and it goes up and down and like I was just explaining what happened to me like you know I was probably in crisis mode like an hour ago freaking out like how am I going to get here on time and then now it's like you know maybe like thriving and excelling so it's like it's, it's interesting how things go up and down and they change it every minute so I'm going to go sp spit these up into five groups just to kind of give you guys a chance to like think about it. Thank you. And what I want to do is if you can write a couple of words, you know, emotions, feelings that you start to associate with these different words. So like crisis, struggling, surviving, thriving, and excelling. So there's five, I put five of them out. So what's that? Oh, no, no, no. I just did those. It's okay. Hey, we're good on we're good on time. That's okay. Uh, real quick. Yeah, there's a slide. All right, so since I only got 10 minutes left, we'll, we'll keep going. So who has a uh, crisis? Childhood, suffering, chaos. Catastrophic drama. Uh, chaos. Good one. Yeah, yeah. All right. Who has struggling? Um, hello. Uh, anxiety. Uh, we have struggling. Uh, anxiety, depression, and lack of confidence. Thank you. Lack of confidence. Good. Surviving. Uh, just like going through the motions of things. Yeah. Good. Um, how about thriving? Um, we have constantly working on yourself, positive thinking, success, happy, confident. Good. So see, you notice it's just like starting to get like go up, go up on the on the continuum. And the last one's excelling.
For excelling, we have um, in control, success, happiness, and relaxed. All right, amazing. Go ahead and click the next, and it kind of just shows you all the words. You there? Oh, yeah, there you go. So you're going from very anxious to anxious to worried to positive to cheerful. And again, it's like you could be at anywhere at any time at any day and kind of go up and down as, as the day goes, up, goes, goes on. Sometimes you stay in crisis for a while, like I did. Sometimes you stay in excelling, but it's always, it's always a moving thing. Um, okay, next one. Why is it important to learn about mental health? Anybody want to answer? Yeah. It's really good to learn about mental health to make self-monitor. Cool. Yes. What else? It also gets rid of the stigma around it. The more we talk about it, it makes you get awesome. Yeah. 1,000%. Two more back there. Go ahead. Yep. Yeah, yeah. You just reminded me, I forgot to talk about that. Thank you. So yeah, you know, when, when I was going to school, we talk a lot about physical health, right? Um, and we learn about things that we could do for our physical health. What are things that we can do for physical health? What's that? Exercise, yeah, go ahead. Sleep. Cool, and how about for our mental health? Well, meditate, there we go. Breath work, yes, all right, all right. Sleep, exactly. So if you kind of notice, they all kind of go hand in hand, they're very similar. So it's like, as we learn, as we try to deal with our mental health, we also have to deal with our physical health. And it even goes into like, you know, dieting and you know, what we eat and what we put in our bodies. So I don't know who's coming to my, who's coming to my next class, anybody in here? We'll talk about plant-based diet later on in the next one. But uh, that kind of all goes hand in hand. Um, you know, and like, I like what somebody said, like, you know, so that we can end the stigma and be able to talk about it. And like, you know, for me, it's not really having the right answer for people, but it's more importantly, like you have to learn to see the signs and learn to just listen, you know? So like when I was talking about the person I was talking about before, I was just literally sitting there and just like listening. And what happens is people start to like get the answer for themselves as they they're talking about it, you know, like I'm not here to give opinions because, you know, you have your own life, you know, I can give you, I can give you my story. I can tell you what I did, but I can't, you know, I'm not here to tell people what to do. Uh, go ahead. Next page. Um, so why hospitality? We're kind of winding down now. So uh, the burn chef project did a survey and it found that 84 percent of the people experience mental health issues within their career and 46 percent um, felt uncomfortable talking about it so in essence it's about four and five people in the industry go through this and you know don't want to talk about it but okay just a couple of questions you can uh what does it say? Sit for true. All right. So stand up if it's false. Mental illness can happen to anyone at any time. True or false? Everybody's saying true. One false. All right, go ahead. And the answer is <laughs> true. All right. Next one. Uh, mental ill health is separate and there's no link to other illnesses or conditions. Everybody's up. And the answer is, it's coming, it's coming. Awesome. All right, good one, 100%. All right. There's not a one size fits all when it comes to mental ill health. Sit for true. Stand for false. All right. Answer is true. All right. Next page. I think this is the last one. Everyone has the same threshold, therefore reacts to situations in the same way as another. False. Thank you.
All right, so we're gonna fly through this one quick, quick. So yeah, like I was saying before, like we're made for stress. We're made to go through this. Like it's not saying we're not saying that the hospitality industry is unbearable, um, but again, it's like you know, we're, you know, it's how we deal with it, right? And how we deal with all the stress. So you can go to the next page. So here we talk about like a, a stress bucket. Um, and what we'll do real quick is maybe just a couple, couple of hand raises as far as like, what, um, what are some sources of stress? What, 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 what's, a, what's a source of stress? Anybody, go ahead. Bills, yeah, financial problems. School, uh, school, really? Nah, <laughs> don't let them hear that. Yeah, pain, yes. Future, yeah. People, relationships, right? Family, work. All of them. It goes on and on and on and on. And right. And then when you're in the hospitality business, it's the angry guests, it's the vendors, it's staff not coming to work. It's it's it, it's the same thing. It keeps going on. Um, what does it feel like? Give me a couple of words when you feel stressed out. What do you feel? Yeah. Suffocated. Yeah. Overwhelmed, out of control, scared. Yeah, that's a good one, afraid. So um, go on to the next one. So what are some signs that you could see in like your schoolmates or, or coworkers? What, it's maybe like how they look, how they're acting. What, what, what are some things that you can see if you see that somebody is stressed out? What's that? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a good one. Yeah, overreactions, exactly. Loss of appetite. Loss of appetite, yeah. What else? How about like, go ahead. Mood change. Mood change, yeah, 100%. How about like how they're dressed, you know, did they not take a shower for a couple of days? The hairs, I don't have hair, but you know, your hair's all over the place. Um, you know, clothes are dirty, goes on and on and on. So, um, go ahead, next one. So here we go, you know, making mistakes, sleep problems. You know, one thing that I used to do, um, is I used to come to work a lot earlier and then leave a lot later. So that's how I dealt with my problems is just staying at work, you know, and just, just doing that on a nonstop basis. You know, looking tired, increased arguments, somebody said, right? It's an interesting one where you just get sneaky. Lack of care over your appearance. Use of caffeine, alcohol, cigarettes, you know, irritability. Go ahead. All right, some quick self-care tips. Go to the next page. So we adopted the, the can-do attitude to kind of like help us come up with, uh, you know, ways to cope with stress, right? And focus on how we're going to deal with it. And this is like, in a sense, this is kind of like what I do on a daily basis and just some, some quick tips. So we talk about connecting, like, you know, connecting with peers, talking to people. I used to isolate. I didn't want to connect with anybody. You know, that's how, how I dealt with it. Um, active, you know, noticing. So like mindfulness, somebody mentioned, discover new things, you know, pick up new hobbies, try different things. Um, and then offer, meaning, you know, offer your help, helping people. What, 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 what works for me and a lot of people is just getting out there and helping others. And it takes you out of, out of your head. Go ahead. We go to the next one. And then this just kind of just gives you like a little like guide of, you know, taking an hour of a day, you know, taking one hour and, and, and focusing on you. So taking, you know, 10 minutes to connect with somebody. You know, reaching out to a friend, you know, you know, there's a family member going through something, reach out, see how they're doing, see what you can do to help them. Uh, 20 minutes of activity. Um, I do a little bit more, but I do not. For me, I do yoga every single day when I wake up. That's the first thing I do. Get active, get, get into my head, you know, and then uh, 10 minutes of notice. So that's like, for me, meditation. You know, when I do yoga, it's like a moving meditation. So I do it kind of all at the same time. But at the end of the night, too, I wind down. I literally, I put my legs up the wall and I just like shut off my phone and just be quiet for like 10 minutes just to get, like wind down. 
Um, and then 10 minutes of helping others. Go ahead. Uh, final mind, mindfulness, just kind of like things that you could think about, you know, think about things that you can see, you know, if it's like walking outside, looking at the ocean, you know, looking at the trees, watching the clouds go. Things that you can hear for me, you know, one is like music, listening to music, uh, things you can touch, things you can smell, like, you know, food, coffee, and then things you can taste. Um, next page. Useful resources. Uh, I really like, um, I went into the restroom before here and I saw there's a sign on the wall and it has like some kind of a hotline or something for you guys, for you guys to call for students. And I really kind of like that as like a, you know, a number. And like, it was talking about like depression. If you feel depressed, this is what you can do, you know? Um, so there's stuff out there like in the school right now and in, in the hallways. Uh, go ahead. Um, if you want to take a picture of this, so this is the Burnt Chef hotline. Um, it's 24 hours. This is for the U.S. and Canada specifically. So you could text, you know, text this number at any time. Like I was saying, you're, you're upset. You're, you're going through something. Financial issues, you know, relationships, anything. You call them and somebody will, will, will answer you within, you know, like five to ten minutes. And, you know, it's a great resource because it also to have other resources for you. They can kind of give you things to do, you know, people to call, places to go um, to get more help. Um, and it's, for me, it's amazing for, because it's 24 hours. You know, it could be four in the morning and you're going through it. You, you, you text them. Go ahead. Um, check out, like I was saying, check out our Burnt Chef Academy on the website. It gives you more resources. Um, talks about mindfulness and um, Gives you statistics, there's courses. Um, and then check out our shop too. You can get, like I say, t-shirts, chef coats, hats. I have a shirt, but I, it was all it was all crazy getting here, but uh, maybe next time. Um, and then conclusion, you know, mental health is something we all have. You know, stress is, is the biggest factor in that. So it's taking the time to, you know, take care of yourself, you know, so that you're there for others because you can't pour from an empty cup. Uh, go ahead. You know, consider what you already do to look after your well-being and what things can you do differently. So this kind of end, ends, the, ends the, uh, the presentation. But before you guys go, um, if you can, just, you know, for yourself, I don't, I, we don't have to go around the room and talk about it. But like jot down one thing that, that you've, you've taken out of this class and that you're able to sort of, you know, Put it, put in your toolkit as something that you can kind of start to do to, to improve your well-being. And that's it. Thank you. Let's give it one more time for Patrick. Thank you so much for sharing your story um, and being so vulnerable with us. I'm sure it meant a lot to everyone here. Um, so in a moment, we'll turn it over to the audience for questions, maybe not too many, because I know class ends it very soon. <laughs> um, and so, and we'll also give those on Zoom, maybe one question as, as well. So, but before we turn it over to the audience, I do have one question for you, Patrick. Um, given the points that you highlighted in your presentation, how do you, I uh, think FIU, namely our colleges, beyond just hospitality, um, could help address these issues and support students? Um, for me, it's, you know, letting everybody know that there's resources out there, you know, and, and like I was saying, I love that there's a sign out in the hallway. It's just giving people resources, giving somebody an outlet that they can, they can talk because it's, it's real out there where people feel like they're not able to, to talk about this, you know, and sometimes it's, even like like in my example is like with somebody's family that they they didn't feel comfortable talking about this problem. Um, so it's sometimes just that that phone call, you know, or, or that resource or somewhere they can go where they can feel safe. And I think the biggest thing is making people feel safe to talk about it. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have a question or two in the audience for our speaker about the program? Yeah. I 
Hello. Um, my, first off, thank you for coming out today. Um, and my question for you today is when you are at the time in your life when you don't know what's next, what do you give as advice in order to find out what's next for you in life? Uh, for me, it's slowing down. You know, instead of speeding up, slow down. Um, I, uh, I did like a little bit of like a career trans transition for a while and I, I left restaurants and was working in hotels. Um, I left, you know, I left Planta for a while. And I, it was like, I felt it was a difficult decision, but I needed to make just like a change, you know? And um, I worked in hotels for a while um, and I, I think it was good. I don't, I don't regret ever making that change, but you know, I started to feel like I wanted to come back to it. And I didn't know the right way to come back to it, you know? So it's, I had to like, just take time and like literally just like go sit on the beach. Uh, you know, I live on South beach. So I walk out to the beach every couple of, couple of, you know, days and just sit out there and just like, listen, you know, listen to the, to the wind, listen to the universe, listen to the water. And like, eventually like the answers will come, but you have to just, you know, keep doing the right next thing, but like, don't, overreact and speed up into decisions that's that's what i would say just like take it slow get advice from people you know amazing anyone else do we have any zoom questions anyone on zoom um, not a question, but just wanted to put a face. Um, so for the students in the audience, I'm Brenny Garcia. I'm the Associate Vice President for Student Health and Wellness. So I oversee all of your health fee related departments. So the counseling center, the clinics, victim advocacy, um, our Dean of Students office, Panthers Care. Um, so after this, if you wanna learn more about the services, cause maybe you're unfamiliar, I know Trustee Rowe is gonna make some comments in her closing remarks. Um, I just wanted to, for you to see my face. <laughs> um, we have have services here at BBC and MMC for those of you that go to both campuses. Um, and obviously after the pandemic, we converted a lot of our services to telehealth to make it as easy as possible for all of you. We also have a 24 seven hotline outside of the Burton Chef project and the number that hospitality provides. Um, so you pay for it, use it. We are here to service you and make sure, um, and along with what Patrick said, the philosophy that I have when I took over this position is the nine dimensions of wellness, right? So physical, mental, financial, occupational, environmental, all of these components contribute to your well-being, right? So how can we as departments kind of work in alignment to make sure that we are providing as much student success for you as possible to give you those toolboxes that Patrick mentioned once you graduate. So please come to our department if you have any questions. Thank you so much, Dr. Garcia. Thank you for everything your office does. Um, everything is free and included in your fees that you already pay, such as counseling, health education, nutrition, even massages. I didn't know that. Sound <laughs> therapy. I mean, listen, I, I would not pass it up. But um, if you'd like to learn more, you can visit shw.fiu.edu. Um, you can follow uh, FIU uh, Student Health and Wellness at, at FIUSHW. Um, or speak to Dr. Garcia. Um, but let's give our wonderful speaker another one. Thank you so much to our sponsors, the Chaplin School, FIU Alumni Association, and the FIU Student Health and Wellness. Thank you everyone here for participating and everyone on Zoom. And I hope you have a wonderful week and be healthy. Thank you.